Inflation continues to be the main economic challenge facing consumers, investors, and the markets. Interest rates are rising as the Federal Reserve attempts to battle inflation. And so what does it all mean for you? Well, to help me break it all down is today's special guest, John Nigerian. He's an options trader and co-author of the book, Follow the Smart Money. John, it's always great to have you here on the Income Generation. Great to be with you, David. Thank you for having me. So what's going on? I mean, you know, earlier this week, we got the CPI numbers, inflation is persisting, but we get you know, a negative GDP surprise in the first quarter, which we, I don't think, expected. So how do you put it all together? You put it in a blender, push the button. What does it mean? <laughs> well, um, because they've stripped out food and energy from what the Fed really tracks, they do keep track of the rest of it. Again, food and energy, because we all got to eat and most of us have to drive, or at least the stuff we're going to eat has to get delivered. And most of that is done by fossil fuel uh, powered vehicles. But I, I think overall, the, the inflation number was still hot. Um, wages are not staying high and elevated. They're instead coming down. And that is a dangerous two-edged mm. sword that people worry pushes us towards uh, stagflation. Right. Uh, when, when people can't afford um, goods because those goods are a lot more expensive and they're earning less. Clearly, they're earning less um, at the same point as last year, given the inflation uh, and everything that they buy has become yeah. more expensive. Yeah, that stagflation word, it's funny. I was on an interview myself uh, just about six months ago, and I mentioned that it's a possible outcome. And I remember the, the host of the show saying, stagflation, really? And now, of course, it's, it's becoming a, a reality. So the Federal Reserve, um, do you think it's all big talk in terms of how many interest rate hikes they're going to make? Do you think they're going to continue to try to do that, maybe causing a recession? I think they're very aware of exactly what you just broke down, Dave. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they obviously don't want to do that. Um, but they uh, either believe or they're mouthing the idea that they can quell inflation by moving up interest rates. And this inflation uh, that we've got right now will not uh, be quelled by those interest rate moves because this inflation um, is because of cutoffs out of Russia, Ukraine. You and I have talked about it mm -hmm. incessantly. Right. Um, so all of the inflation is not on Mr. Putin, but the last hockey stick side of it is on that war in Ukraine, which we can pretty much hang squarely on the shoulders of uh, Mr. Yeah. Putin. So I think overall, the Fed knows they probably have at least one more 50 basis point move, perhaps two. 75, I believe, is off the table. And again, they can hit it as hard as they want, Dave. All they're doing is causing more pain for consumers at that point and more pain for the U.S. government that has to finance its debt at record levels at yeah. not record prices, but at significantly higher prices than they were financing it at over the past several years. Yeah, it's, I, I've likened it recently uh, to chemotherapy, right? Chemotherapy to cure a cancer patient is, is essentially poison. So you want to have enough poison to kill the cancer, but just leave it this short of enough to actually kill the patient. And that's what the Federal Reserve is trying to do. The problem is there's something else feeding the tumor right now uh, that the chemotherapy, the economic chemotherapy can't solve, and that's the supply side of it. Yep, very true. And right now, Dave, we've had a little bit of easing on the energy side because of the China lockdowns. Right, um, Tempor so obviously temporary easing. <laughs> yeah, factories not operating as much, um, people not traveling to and from uh, cities to those factories and so forth means demand for uh, diesel and gasoline uh, is quite low. It's not zero, but it's much lower than it was. When that kicks back in, you can pretty much expect to see uh, the consumer here feeling even more pain. And I'm not happy to be bringing that news to folks, but when that happens, um, it might be coinciding with the summer driving season, which kicks off in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, exactly. I, 
My sentiments too, we're seeing a little pullback in fuel prices, but we're not going to be able to see any permanent full pullback until, until the fall. And another thing that I think they're just starting to talk about now, and I know you and I talked about it in the past, is corporate America spent about a five or six year period where they were short on capital expenditures to begin with. So we were running up against the supply limit of goods and services anyway, because corporate America was depreciating everything, but not, not they weren't investing in CapEx. And, and that's something that, that most people didn't realize that we're coming up close to that limit. And then when you intentionally shut down the economy and have all the pent up demand that results from that and, and, and how long it takes to get the economy opened again, it's no wonder why we're, we're seeing what we're seeing, which means more, more could be driven from the supply side problem than even the demand side. Than, than economists even give, give credit to. Right, and uh, exactly what you're saying is playing out in real time. Yeah. Um, and so that's, like I say, it's, it's a dangerous mix. Um, it's one that, you know, every once in a while, I thank goodness that Joe Manchin stood his ground and didn't yeah. participate in another three to five trillion, which the Congress and the president wanted to throw at this market. Can you imagine? I think I inflation would be 11 to 14% if they'd done that, Dave. And so as bad as it is right now, it would have been much worse with another three to five trillion thrown into the mix. Yeah, I agree completely. It's crazy. Now, the good news, I think, with all this volatility, you've probably been able to help uh, some of your clients make some money in the options market, I would assume, right? Yeah, well, yeah. and just as a very quick example, when volatility in Apple, biggest company in the world, when that goes from 27% where it was a week ago to 40% where it got to, you know, just in the middle of this week, um, that means options or rent, if you want to look at it as an apartment, right. um, that rent just went up dramatically. It went from $4,000 a month, which is what you'd be getting for a 10 lot of call options that you wrote against your Apple stock to $6,500 a month. So again, as far as getting more rent, anybody that's a landlord loves that and yeah. who doesn't like it, of course, the person who's paying that rent, but at least in the case of this, uh, the consumers that we deal with, our clients are happy uh, that they're able to collect that more rent rather yeah. than being the you know other side of that trade. There you go. It's, uh, and of course, that's a strategy that's actually appropriate for members of the income generation because they're not speculating. They're just basically you know, increasing the, the income. So whatever dividend you have on your stock now gets tripled or quadrupled with the extra rent that you mentioned. So, okay, stagflation is a definite possibility, but it doesn't mean recession. But your best guess, will we see recession in 2023? Um, 2023, that one's tougher. Um, the rest of this year, I think we will avoid it. Right. 2023, it really will, you know, if, if you and I had that crystal ball, again, I said at the top, I don't think the Fed's going to drive us into, in, uh, into a recession and or with right. stagflation as another risk out there. But, in, but inflation alone could cause a decrease in demand, demand destruction just because people pull back and say, I can't, I can't afford it, especially what you said before with wages actually, wage, wage increases going in the wrong direction. Right, and as, as we both know, uh, somebody's uh, recession, uh, everybody feels it differently, but how the government and how economists measure it is two quarters of negative right. GDP. Um, so to your, answer your question, I don't think we see that this year. Uh, next year, it is a possibility. Um, but again, I hope that cooler heads prevail and they don't do that. You and I are on the same page. So let's, let's hope, hope and pray together. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking soon enough in the next couple months to see whether the Fed does only one or two more half percent increases and has the wisdom to push the pause button at that point. John Nigerian, always my pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us here on the Income Generation. Thank you, Dave. Have a great weekend. You too, my friend. Thank you for watching today's market update video. If you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up button to give us a like and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for new content each and every week.